Hey guys, it's me, Tech Rally, and today I want to share with you a little special announcement, and that is I made a project based course using React, React Bootstrap, and the Rapid API. I always hear this trend that tutorials are super bad and courses are super bad because after I finish, I don't know what to do. Or I always hear the other side of the story where tutorials are too perfect, you never run into errors, and Basically, it doesn't really follow what a true software developer does where they run into bugs, they put console logs, they see what actually happens. And I was trying to figure out how do I replicate that process? So what I did was, hey, look, let me build a project using React and kind of show you what I do as a software engineer to solve a problem. So for this course, I decided to just kind of not really focus on the production value and all of that stuff and decided to make this video course where from start to finish, you see me code, but you also see me make mistakes. I never really stop the video unless I am just a little tired of talking and I need a break. But other than that, every time I make an error, every time I make a mistake, every time I don't know what to do, I leave the camera running so you can see that I too, as a software developer, struggle. I've been coding for about six years now, and even to this day, I don't write perfect code. I never write perfect code, and I don't think I ever will write perfect code. So why should you feel like you need to write perfect code? I'm putting this course under an umbrella called unfiltered development. And I just kind of made this term up, but I really believe it's true where unfiltered development represents a way where it just shows you the real way of how people actually write code. Tutorials are awesome. I think there's just so many good instructors out there that really take the time to clean up their tutorials, make sure that everybody is just getting this happy path of learning how to code because learning how to code is really hard i admit but the reality of unfiltered development is that you go through the struggles you make the mistakes you acknowledge the mistakes you embrace the mistakes all of these are super important parts of what makes you a better software developer and even your instructors that are writing these tutorials and making it picture perfect for you. They are struggling with their project, with their tutorial before they give it off to you. So they want to make sure that you have a smooth path towards software development. But in some ways, are we handholding too much where a student that goes through these tutorials Maybe they'll get an interview, but they find themselves struggling during the technical parts because they just never been through any type of struggle. With that being said, I want to just share these updates with you. And that's why I've been a little bit all over the place in terms of recording and whatnot. I am going to share you a few clips from the video series. Like I said, again, this is not necessarily the best production value based course, but I hope that it provides you the best value in terms of learning. If you are unfamiliar with React and JavaScript, I highly recommend you not to get this course because these are more geared towards people that have at least learned a little bit of React, but they don't know how to build a project with it. And what really makes this course unique, in my opinion, is that I actually don't finish the course. I found a lot of motivation behind this philosophy when I discovered Frontend Mentor. And what Frontend Mentor does is that they basically just give you a bunch of assets and tell you to figure it out. I'm not going to necessarily go to that extreme. I'm going to get the project started. I'm going to finish out a feature. But what I'm going to do at the end is encourage you to build your own and not your own application, but just iterate off of whatever is already built and build your own section, build your own page, build your own sport. And you'll be able to figure out, hey, I can't just copy someone else's code. I need to figure this out on my own. In terms of what application we're going to be building on the course, we're going to be building a sports odds application where you can see the odds of two teams competing against each other. With that being said, I want to share you some of my highlights, but more importantly, my lowlights of the course where I'm reading the errors, trying to understand it. Maybe there are moments where I just look at the screen intensely without understanding why I'm making the mistakes that I'm doing. But either way, this is to give you a hint of what this course is about, where I do less about teaching you what a use effect or use state or all of that stuff is. But more importantly, I talk about, oh, how do I resolve this error that I just stumbled upon? Lastly, for the next few weeks, I'm going to put up a 15% off promotion code for my course. So if you are interested in just doing some project-based learning, 
I highly encourage you to sign up, give me some feedback. Let me know if you love it. Let me know if you hate it. Either way, I'm super glad that I could share this project with you and hopefully it could bring you value in your coding journey. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Hey everyone, Tech Rally here. And if you are watching this video, you have signed up for my course on how to build a sports odds websites. And I want to make this very intentional. And what I mean by that is I want to make a video series where it's not just some perfect tutorial where no one makes mistakes. I've been coding for about six years now and I make mistakes all the time. So rather than kind of fluffing it up and making this really, really pretty tutorial series, what I want to do out of this course is just give you the raw unedited versions, show you how I debug code in general and just build an application from start to finish. If you are interested in the final product, what I'm making right now and what I actually built is the sports odds collection website where you can see odds of a sports game. And how are you going to test this? I'm going to open up my inspector tools here. Console log. I'm going to refresh. And now it's oddly enough, we're saying that request failed with the status code 400. What is going on? It says invalid sport. Check the docs. Okay, so there is something wrong with the sport that I put in. But you know what the problem is? Is that I'm expecting fetch odds to take in a key argument here. But in my app.js, I'm actually not putting in anything here. So what I need to do is I need to find the key, which in this case, it's the soccer EPL. And I'm going to pass it in as a string here. So you can see that even I, as a tutorial teacher or course creator teacher, am making mistakes. And I want to really acknowledge the fact that I do make mistakes. This is part of the process and we'll figure it out as we go. But how did I figure this out? I literally read the error, right? So now that I've done this, I'm going to refresh. And now we see that we can see the uh, data and the results. Let's see what happens. Things start breaking. Awesome. So what's happening here now is that it says cannot read properties of undefined. And what that means is that because odds of active sport, let's just actually see what if we can pull it out really quick. So we have object, which is the odds. So let's take this and store it as a global variable. It says temp one of soccer EPL is defined, right? So then we can use the map function or we could get the first element in the array. The problem now is that if I try to do temp one and I try to look for the key called American NFL football, it's undefined. And undefined of zero or undefined of map, you'll get this error here. So this is no bueno. We need to make our component a little bit smarter to know that, hey, if you have an actual key to this, then I want to call the map, right? So for now, let's do this.